Welcome back to readtheticker.com. Today I would like to talk about how to set up a GAN angle chart. Let's read directly from the WD GAN Master Stop Market course. I refer you to page 124. What you see now is how GAN would square time with price equally. In GAN's time before computers, GAN would take a piece of paper Take the high of the selected stock, in this case $28. GAN would mark out a Y axis or vertical axis of 28 divisions. He would do the same with the X axis or the horizontal axis, 28 divisions of days, weeks or months. For now we will assume that the horizontal axis is made up of 28 days. The horizontal and vertical divisions would be of the same length and size, thus a square is formed. Or you could say time has been squared by price. You may if you wish adjust price by multiples of 10, therefore taking the $28 multiplying it by 10 to get $280 or 10 again to get $2800 etc. This is an acceptable adjustment as the number of divisions remain at 28. To use the GAN angle method it is critical that the base chart is set up in this equal squaring of time and price. The GAN angles on this website are true. If you draw a 45 degree line it will be 45 degrees and not a portion. Therefore the underlying base chart must be true squaring of time and price. The only modern day change we need to make is that we need to replace paper with pixels as we are using a computer. Let's go back to the site and I'll show you how we do it. The GAN angle method is only available through the analysis display, number 6 in the list in front of you. We will be using the, the TNX or the 10 year treasury bond yield for demonstration. Ok here's our TNX chart. The first thing we must do is find the high that we need to work with. See 532 there is the yield on the 10 10x. I'm going to work with 550. Nice even round number. So remember 550. Okay. The first thing we do is we need a square. After all, we are squaring time with price. Let's do that. 600 pixels of width to 600 pixels of height. I can rebuild the chart. OK, here's our square but we don't have a, a true squaring of time and price yet because we have uneven matching of price units to time units. Now time units are in days. We can see the statistics down here. X axis to Y axis pixels is 0.634 to 157. How did I calculate that? Let's have a look. I got a 600 x-axis pixels and a 600 y-axis pixels. We have 945 units showing and we have a price range of 3.81 showing. That range comes from the high of 5.61 is 1.8 equals 3.81. So therefore we have a ratio of 0.63 to 157 of x-axis time units to y-axis top price units. Right, here's where I got the data from. Here's my viewing periods, records viewing. Here's my price range. Okay, so we need to get a true squaring of time and price per pixel units. Right, so we, first thing we do we select the manual chart, chart scale. Well, we know our high we're using is 550 so we really can only have 550 days. So our price range is going to be, is, is going to be 0 to 550. Here you see the 550 to 5.5 is a price adjustment of x times 100. 
Let's rebuild the chart. We now have a one-to-one -one price ratio chart. That is equal in time to price. So the number of units in price equal the number of units in time also equals the number of units in pixels, both vertical and horizontal. Here we have 1.09 to 1.09 pixels, one to one. But what's happened to our chart? Where has the data gone from the left hand side of our screen? The data has been cut off due to the fact that we have only allowed 550 days to be shown where previously we were showing 945. So what do we do to fix this? We have one square here, what we need is another square to make up a rectangle, or two squares of equal time and price. To do this manipulation we use our chart size calculator. Here's our chart size calculator link. Okay, here we go. Here's our square that we've calculated, our one-to-one -one result, our data input, chart width, chart height, periods of 550, and price range 5.5, .5, and a price adjustment of x times 100. Now we, we had viewing 945 days, and we we're only showing 550. But we can only allow, at this stage, multiples of 550 to be shown. So let's double this to 1100 days. Run the specs. Now find that we've, we have broken the one to one ratio because we have increased the days without increasing the pixels. So let's double the pixels. Run the specs. Here you see we now have one back, our one to one time to price and pixel ratio. Okay, let's go and back, let's go and put that back into our chart. We're putting in 1200 to 600, 1100 to 5.5. Rebuild the chart. Right now we have our we've now reclaimed the data we lost on the left hand side. Our statistics tell us we still have a one-to-one -one time to price ratio chart. That's that's still good. But unfortunately our chart is so large it's off the screen. There is a simple fix. Simply, we have 1,200 to 600. We can try other multiples. Let's try 900 to 450. Aha! Now we have a viewable chart, still maintaining a one-to-one -one time to price ratio. If we go back to our chart size calculator, we'll do the same calculation. 900 to 450, we can see the result in the squares below. Two, our squares are maintained, our ratios are maintained, everything's good. This chart size calculator is just there to make it a little bit easier to determine the GAN angle time to, to price ratio chart. Let's close that down now. We now have a workable chart for the GAN angle methodology. So long as we maintain that one to one time to price ratio, we can easily apply the GAN angles. You can use the chart size calculator to ma manipulate the chart to give you more room. For example, you might want to cut this area off and you may want to remove this area. You can do that via manipulation of the chart size calculator. Whatever you do, so long as you maintain the one by one ratio. This video was in intended to show you how to get the chart to be ready for a GAN angle methodology. Thanks for watching.